I'm not scared of any threats from a housewife like you, who has no job and no parents. That's right, you can't do anything with a pile of trash, because it's just trash. I get how you feel now, I'm moving out of this house. Well, now you're homeless, good luck being homeless. This is a good chance for Larry to leave the house. So let's work together to get rid of the trash and clean up. They went to Larry's room and told him to pack up his stuff and leave. I was planning to leave by myself, but I didn't think Larry would get kicked out too. My name is Lauren, I'm 29 years old, and I'm a housewife. I recently married a man named David. He's 33 years old, four years older than me. At first, I thought he was mature and calm like an older man. Since he often talked about his mother, I thought he was a good man who cared about his family. But after we got married, I saw my husband's true personality. On our wedding day, my mother-in-law was very nice to me, and I thought we would have a very happy marriage. My husband asked me to live with his mother after we got married because my father-in-law had passed away a few years ago. He said he wanted to stay close to his mom. I thought my mother-in-law was trustworthy, so I agreed to move in with her. But as soon as we got married, both my mother-in-law and my husband changed. They would say, hey Lauren, hurry up and bring me tea, and clean the bathroom and toilet quickly. My mother-in-law would shout at me and give me orders like that. Maybe she wants to scare me or it's just because of her age. She would call me loudly and make me do all sorts of chores. The biggest surprise was finding out about my roommate, whom no one had told me about, when I woke up the other day. I was surprised to find a man I didn't know in the kitchen. I froze, wondering who he was. He noticed me and said, I'm Larry, David's younger brother. He introduced himself. I had never been told that David had a brother, let alone a roommate, so that was a shock. Larry is 30 years old, the same age as me. I went to my mother-in-law and asked her to introduce me to my brother-in-law. She said, oh, you mean Larry? Don't worry about him. He's just a reclusive ghost. I was surprised. How could she not care about her own son? She called him a ghost and said she was happy with just David. She said Larry was just a useless hermit who only went out for shopping and stayed home the rest of the time. I was shocked by her words. I felt disappointed in my mother-in-law and couldn't believe how much she had changed since we got married. It was sad to see her discriminate against her own son. I am an only child and have no siblings, so I couldn't compare. I would be shocked if my own mother said such things about me or ignored me. My parents are already dead, and I envy families that are alive and together. I hoped that at least parents and children could get along. I asked my husband about Larry when he got home from work. I thought maybe brothers could get along, but my husband was cold. He said, leave him alone. Just pretend he doesn't exist. He won't harm you. He said it dismissively, as if he had forgotten to mention it. I was disillusioned by how he called his own brother heir. My husband had no family memories or anything, he was just a mama's boy. I finished my chores for the day and went upstairs, feeling regret about my marriage. Then I bumped into Larry, who was just going to the bathroom. You married my brother, didn't you? Larry said to me. Yeah, what's wrong? I replied, I'm sorry, it's nothing. But I won't say anything bad, you'd better get out of here. What? I asked, confused. I'm sorry, but you should get a divorce, he said. I was a little offended and confused. I was shocked at how my husband and mother-in-law acted. I married my husband because I loved him. It's unbelievable that Larry would ask me to end our marriage after just one day. It's none of your business. I can handle it, I said. I'm a competitive person. I'm sorry about that, said Larry. I'm also sorry for my outburst, he added, bowing his head. I thought he was acting strange. Until a little while ago, I thought I understood why my mother-in-law, and I felt uneasy about the rules. He apologized so politely that I'm not sure if he really meant it. Maybe he was just trying to be nice and warn me. As I was thinking about that, Larry said, excuse me, and went into his room. 
My mother-in-law and husband say my brother-in-law is a strange recluse, but to me, he seems like a decent person who deserves respect. The next day, while I was putting breakfast on the table, Larry came down to get a drink. I said, good morning, Larry. Why don't you join us for breakfast? Good morning, Lauren. Thank you for asking, Larry replied, glancing at his mother. I'm not eating breakfast with him. Just get the breakfast done, she yelled at me. It's okay, Larry said quickly and went back to his room. I wanted to apologize for my strong words yesterday, but I couldn't do it. Hey, all you have to do is housework. Don't do anything unnecessary, okay? My mother-in-law gave me a fierce glare. I was stunned by her harsh attitude. Even though I was the bride, I didn't expect this kind of treatment, and my husband's behavior toward me changed drastically. What the heck? Today's menu is curry. You should have told me before lunch. I had curry for lunch too, he shouted. How is that my fault? Why didn't he call me and tell me he had curry for lunch and wanted something else? I kept my mouth shut. He continued to yell at me, Hey, you're not apologizing. Who do you think you are? You're here to do the housework. Make sure you understand that. I was shocked and stayed silent. David didn't love me. He just wanted a housekeeper. It's terrible. How could he be so cruel with such a calm voice? They didn't care about me. They just wanted to make themselves comfortable. They were using me. Seeing them giggling and watching TV in the living room, I walked upstairs. As soon as I got upstairs, I burst into tears. Then a hand gently offered me a handkerchief. I still think you should leave, said a familiar voice. I looked up, and it was Larry. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, he said. I wiped my tears in a hurry. I'm sorry I used your handkerchief. No, I gave it to you because I wanted you to use it, Larry said. I heard what my brother and mother said. I knew it. They're the worst, he continued. When Larry said that, I asked him what he meant by I knew it. Larry said he had been in a similar situation before. I asked him for more details, and he told me that my husband had promised to marry another woman before. But because my mother-in-law and husband treated her the same way they treat me now, she ran away just before the wedding. Hearing that story made me feel a bit relieved. It showed that my husband and mother-in-law were pretending to be nice before marriage to avoid scaring away the bride. I felt hopeless. How could I have trusted them? But I had nowhere else to go if my husband left me. I'm just a housewife. My husband and mother-in-law wouldn't let me get a part-time job. I can't even move out and rent another place. I didn't know what to do. All I could do was cry. Then Larry said, If we keep talking here, it will look suspicious. Let's talk at a coffee shop next time, if you like. He handed me a piece of paper with his contact information on it and went back to his room. I was determined to get out of this house. I was thinking about how my struggle for survival had just begun. I told my mother-in-law I was going to the city office and then stopping by the supermarket on my way home. She warned me not to leave any chores undone. I made sure everything was perfect before leaving. She grumbled about not accepting it if I was late for dinner. I pretended to agree and went to the coffee shop where Larry and I had planned to meet. I told Larry that my parents were gone, so I couldn't rely on them anymore. I had canceled the house I was renting and quit my job. I told him I needed to start all over again. It's hard to move out of the house in this situation, especially with the work that keeps me tied up with my mother-in-law and husband from early in the morning until late at night. Larry then asked me, Lauren, can you draw? Huh? What do you mean? I replied confused. Oh, I see. So can you? Yes, well, I went to art school before, I said. Really? That's great, he exclaimed. Yes, but how? I asked. Just in time. Another mega artist is looking for an assistant. You can do it remotely, Larry said. But I don't have a computer right now, I responded. I'll lend you my computer that I'm not using right now, Larry said. Really? Thank you so much. But why do you have an extra computer? What do you do for a living? I asked. That's kind of you to ask. You don't think I'm just a recluse, do you? No, no, you use polite words a lot, 
and you look neat and tidy, so I don't think that at all. Do you work from home? I replied. Yes, actually, I'm an engineer, Larry said. An engineer? I didn't know that. I didn't realize you were a business owner, I exclaimed. Yes, I used to work for a company, but now I run my own business. It's easier for me to take orders on my own. We also have web designers as employees. We only have a few people, so everything is done remotely, he explained. I see, so that's why you're home all the time. But your mother and David said you're just home doing nothing. Haven't you told them the truth? I asked. I don't see any benefits in telling those two, Larry replied. True, but if you're such a good manager, why don't you just leave that house? I wondered. Larry then shared his thoughts with me for the first time. Let's not talk about me. I need to introduce you to the manga artist, he said. Larry made a phone call right away, and soon a remote interview was set up for me. I was going to have an interview with the manga artist on Wednesday. My mother-in-law usually had lessons after which she would go out with other participants, so I could do the remote interview then. I seemed to make a good impression in the interview and got hired immediately. Considering my situation, they said they would send the hiring documents in an envelope addressed to Larry. So, I was all set for the job. Next, we needed to find a place for me to stay. I have a friend who works for a real estate agency. He can give you a good deal, Larry told me. Who is this guy? He seems to have all kinds of resources. Our search for a new place to stay went well, and we were able to sign a contract for a place that met my needs. Just when everything was starting to go smoothly, I had a fight with my husband one day. Hey, where's dinner? My husband woke me up while I was sleeping in the bedroom. He was a bit drunk, like he had just come home from drinking. Dinner? It's midnight. Besides, you said you didn't want to eat because you were going out for drinks, I said. Shut up. The king is home, and you don't even get up to greet him. Now you say you didn't make dinner? You're a bad wife, so useless. His words made me really angry. Do you have any idea how hard I've been working with your mother for you? How can you act so superior to me? That's because you're my wife. A wife should support her husband, and your job is to take care of the house. If you can't do your chores, don't go against me. A wife who can't do the housework is just like trash. As my husband said this, I heard the door open. My mother-in-law left in an awkward way. You're just like trash. Larry is also trash, and this place looks like a dump. My husband sneered as my mother-in-law agreed. Yes, let's take out the oversized trash, he added. What did you just say? I asked him. He opened the drawer and pulled out a piece of paper. This is what I mean. It's a divorce paper. You're no good to me anymore. I'm going to find another wife who can take your place. That's why I'm divorcing you. Get out of my house. You're disgusting. You think your wife is just a slave. The best wife is one who acts like a housekeeper. Don't you worry about saying things like that. I hope you regret what you just said one day, I replied. What are you trying to say? I'm not afraid of any threats from a housewife with no job and no parents like you, he laughed. My husband and my mother-in-law laughed together. That's so true. You can't do anything about it because you're just trash. Well, I understand how you feel now. I'm going to move out of this house. I said that and signed the divorce papers. Then, I left. I put the divorce papers in my bag and started to pack my stuff. My mother-in-law and husband watched me with grins on their faces. Now you're homeless. What on earth are you going to do now? Well, it's none of our business anymore. Good luck, homeless lady. Oh, and Larry, this is a good time for him to get out too. Yeah, let's take out the trash and clean this place up. After we get rid of him, we'll tear down the wall and make it bigger and more comfortable. My husband and mother-in-law were already talking about what they would do after we were kicked out. Then they went to Larry's room and told him to pack up his belongings and leave. I was planning to leave anyway, but I never thought they would kick Larry out too. I kind of regretted letting my emotions take over and having a fight with my husband. 
I'm sorry, Larry. It's my fault. No, don't worry about it, Larry said. I already realized I can't live with them anymore. Besides, I have other things I'm interested in. Maybe it was lucky we had that fight, he smiled. It seemed like Larry wasn't bothered by leaving, which made me feel a bit better. Five days later, on Wednesday, when my mother-in-law was out of town, Larry and I called a moving company and moved out. After we finished moving, my mother-in-law called my new place. Don't worry, we have already left, I said. Larry came with you, didn't he? She asked. Yes, we moved out together. I'm glad I don't have to see you guys anymore, she said happily and hung up. But what she didn't know was that Larry and I were planning revenge. I managed to move my belongings and start a new life just in time. Thanks to Larry, I got a lot of money for my husband in the divorce. Larry had recorded what my husband and mother-in-law said during the fight. Their words were considered harassment, which helped prove the divorce was my husband and mother-in-law's fault. I was able to claim a lot of money as revenge on my husband. Larry's friend, a lawyer, helped me get the alimony. My husband was shocked and accepted the payment. I was really grateful for Larry's help and decided not to mention it anymore. A few days later, I got a lot of phone calls from my ex-mother-in-law. It felt like a demon knocking at my door. I realized I had forgotten to block her number, so I had no choice but to answer the phone. Lauren, where are you? She demanded. There's no way I'll tell you that. We're strangers now, I replied. Please don't say that, she begged. I'm calling because, um, where's Larry? She asked. Huh, why are you asking about Larry? I replied. I'm looking for him, but I can't reach him anymore, she said. That's too bad. Maybe he doesn't like you anymore, I said, trying to provoke her. Then someone else took the phone. Don't be silly. You two moved out together. You must know where he is. You're a bunch of jerks. I did know where Larry was, but I wasn't going to tell them. I'm afraid I don't know. You'll have to find him yourself, I said. Where the heck are you anyway? You don't have a home, a job, or a place to live. If you're willing to beg, I might let you come back but you'd have to be my housekeeper, she said. Who's coming back to you? I have a job and a place to live. I'm not going back to you, I replied. That's a lie, she shouted. My ex-husband was surprised because he didn't know I could get everything sorted out so quickly. I didn't bother to correct him. Please don't call me again. If you call me or come near me, I'll call the police, I said and then hung up the phone. I blocked my mother-in-law's number right away. I had already blocked my ex-husband's number. They were so panicked because they had just realized something important. They thought my father-in-law had left them a lot of money, but it was Larry who had been sending money to his mother's account every month. My mother-in-law thought Larry was just a lazy person with no job. They couldn't believe that the bank had divided my father-in-law's inheritance. When Larry was kicked out of the house, he stopped sending money. That's why there were no more transfers at the expected time. They must have finally realized who had been providing the money, but it was too late. Larry had already cut ties with his mother and brother. My ex-husband had no money to pay alimony, and my ex-mother-in-law was living off the money Larry sent every month. If the money stops coming in, she's going to be in a lot of trouble. Well, they both got what they deserved. I don't feel sorry for them at all. By the way, Larry bought a nice apartment in New York and is living there comfortably. Why is he so rich? Why did he send money to his parents and stay there all those years? It's because he made a promise to his father. Unlike his mother, Larry's father loved him a lot. Even though his mother and brother treated him badly, he stayed because of his father's wish. His father told Larry, you may not like your mother and brother, but they are important family members to me. So after I pass away, please take care of them too. To keep his promise to his father, even though he was bullied, Larry secretly sent money to support his mother and brother. It's terrible that his mother and brother, who kicked out such a kind-hearted person like Larry, without knowing the truth, are the worst. I met Larry once after we moved out. He said he had made a promise to his father, 
and I agree with him. I hope he can move on. I was feeling hopeless after being tricked by my husband, but luckily Larry saved me. I believe he is an important person in my life, and I wish him happiness. Two years later, Larry asked me to marry him. He proposed to me, but that's another story. It's horrible how a nice person can change so much after getting married. That's a marriage scam, isn't it? I'm glad my brother-in-law is a very reliable person, and now I'm married to him. Anyway, I overcame the obstacles and feel relieved that happiness is finally in my hands. Please let me keep having these happy days. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel if you liked this. See you in the next video.